And Chris Olux just launched their brand new F3000, and this seriously may be the best system for something that goes from small to big enough to run your entire house. That would include just having essential backup power or even going RVing. This can actually have up to two units put together and run a lot of power. My name is Ben, this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. So I wanna take a look at this F3000 and give you the pros and cons of it. That way you can make the decision if this is the right system for you. I'll also have this added to my free solar generator comparison chart, which I'll have linked down below, as well as any coupon codes and links to getting the special pricing for this. Now, when I checked, this is about $2,500 MSRP. Right now, I'm able to find them from anywhere between about $1,600 and $1,800, especially if you use my coupon code, you'll be able to see that lower price. Now, the main competitors to the F3000 are gonna be units like the Pecron E3600, the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, the Jackery Home Power 3000, the Bluetti Apex 300, the Opez Mega 3, and even the High Solus Apollo. All of them have somewhere around the same inverter and similar battery and similar expandability, but there's some things that the F3000 does that none of those systems can do. So let me go through the specs of it, that way you know what the system is and what it is not. First of all, this does have a true 30 amp output 3600 watt pure sine wave inverter. That means the energy coming off of this is clean. You're gonna be able to run any sensitive electronics that you may have. A single unit like this is really geared towards running your essentials. That's gonna be fridges, freezers, lights, fans, Wi-Fi, TV, maybe some medical devices. Those things that you really want to have for communication and comfort when there's a long power outage, this is really what that's geared towards. One of the nicest ways of using the F3000 is to use it for kitchen appliances as well as doing laundry. And one that I highly recommend having this for is a sump pump. Now on the AC outlets here, you can get up to 2400 watts out of these four outlets here. These are a little crammed, so be aware of that. If you got big bulky chargers or plugs that are gonna go in here, it's not gonna fit very well. And then you can get a full 3600 watts out of this port here. I highly recommend using this with something like a transfer switch. A transfer switch allows you to have circuits that you can run either off-grid or on-grid, and this could be your off-grid setup. If you just wanna have it for backup power, you could run those six to 10 circuits plugged into the RV port, and then this would be charging on a normal outlet. As soon as grid power goes down, this continues running all of those circuits. The other option is then you add on the solar, which I'll get into in detail in just a second, and you could actually offset your power bill a little bit by running your essentials, like your fridge, freezer, Wi-Fi, and so on, and that way it's running on solar, not on grid power. You have two USB-C and two USB-A, as well as an Anderson PowerPole 12 volt output, and then a 10 amp 12 volt cigarette lighter plug right here. Now, because you can put two of these together, you can get 240 volt split phase power, which allows you to run power to the whole house. Keep in mind, it's still gonna be limited to 7.2 kilowatts or 7,200 watts. So if you run a lot of electrical heating appliances, whether that's an electric dryer or an electric range or an electric water heater, those things you're not gonna be able to run reliably, even with two of these combined. But if any of those appliances use natural gas or propane, you're easily gonna be able to run them with this. I just found I needed to do another firmware update, but I was about to say, when I first got this, I was getting an idle power consumption rate of about 41 watts. Anchor Solix told me it was gonna be about 24 watts, so I was really surprised to see when the idle power consumption was nearly double of what they were saying. I reported that back and they said I needed to do a firmware update, and as soon as I did that, I actually got 21 watt hours per hour for the idle power consumption rate. That's actually really good for a unit of this size. But once I did my own testing after the firmware update, I got better results than what they expected. The app itself is very easy to use. I was able to connect this to my Wi-Fi as well, so I can monitor and control this anywhere in the world as long as my Wi-Fi is running. I personally use Starlink, so that way even if local internet is out, I'm not affected by that. So I can have my Starlink plugged into this, and that way it's always running it, then I can also control it at any time from anywhere in the world because my Wi-Fi is also backed up by this. Above all the outlets on the screen, you have an adjustable brightness light bar here. Now the battery itself is 3,072 watt hours. It's similar to what you'd find in other units about this size, and it still uses lithium iron phosphate or LFP cells. That means you're realistically gonna see over 4,000 cycles before this reaches about 80% efficiency. What that means is if you go from 100%, down to 0% and back up to 100% and you do that once per day for roughly 14 years, at that point, the battery will be 80% as good compared to how it is right now brand new. So instead of being about 3000 watt hours, it would be roughly 2400 watt hours. Now in my experience and what I've seen with hard testing on LFP cells, even after that many cycles, 
people are still not seeing that much degradation in them. They're actually lasting much better than anticipated. Now it's possible to get up to three expansion batteries with the F3000. Once you go that far, you're at a total of 12,288 watt hours, which is plenty for emergency essential backup power. In my opinion, anything over 10 kilowatt hours is gonna be enough for running things like fridges, freezers, lights, fans, Wi-Fi, and those basic necessities. This comes in at 92 pounds, so it is pretty heavy to move around, but it does have big wheels on the back and a large telescoping handle which makes it easy to move around. In total it's 26 inches by 12 inches by 15 inches so this will fit in really compact spaces. One of the gripes that I do have is that all of these plugs in the screen are on the front here on the broad side rather than the skinny side. Similar to what you see here on the Delta Pro 3 where they've made the front the skinny side, this makes it a lot more sleek to put into a small space, whether it's under a desk or under a bed, and I have access to all of the buttons and the outlets right here. Now granted, the solar inputs and the charging inputs are all on the back, so that's a little bit of a nuisance. So it's really about picking and choosing which you like more. Do you like it on the broad side or the skinny side? It's not a huge decision maker, but it is something to be aware of. And just like that, in a couple of minutes of talking here, I was able to get the full update on the F3000 quickly and easily. Now there's a nice thing and a not so nice thing when it comes to the charging of the F3000. The first nice thing with the solar input is that they have a 1600 watt rated solar input here that'll go up to 165 volts and 17 amps on this main solar input port. That's really impressive because it allows you to use large solar panels. So just like you see right here, I have these four 400 watt solar panels. These are bifacial panels that can actually get up to 500 watts. And these are on the patent pending Minuteman solar panel stands. I know that's a mouthful, but if you go to poweredportablesolar.com or soon to be minutemansolar.com, you'll find these panel stands that work with any framed solar panel. And I'll also include this anchoring system to make sure this is extremely wind and hit resistant. You're not gonna be worried about this blowing away now. But with just one bank of solar panels into the high voltage solar input port on the F3000, this alone will recharge the entire F3000 in under two hours. The XT60 port here, which is not proprietary, is only rated up to 800 watts of solar input, but it only goes up to 60 volts. This is a huge gripe for me. I don't know why they would provide a high voltage input and a low voltage input, because the high voltage input goes all the way down to 11 volts. So if you're going to use the 60 volt input, then I highly recommend taking a look at these Bougie RV 200 watt bifacial solar panels. These have a maximum voltage of about 28.5 volts, which means you can easily put two of these together, still be below the 60 volt mark, and then put another two together in another group, branch them together for four panels total, and that's how you're gonna reach the 800 watts of solar input and maximize the full solar input up to 2400 watts. I just wish they would make it simpler because I'd like to have all of the same panels, rather than four 400 watts and then four 200 watts. You can use this charger right here, and this will also do up to 3,600 watts from any type of clean energy source. So that means if you're using a gas generator, it must be an inverter gas generator. The unit comes with both a 15 amp and a 30 amp charger so if you have access to an rv plug you can get a full 3600 watts of input into this and it even has pass-through capability as long as it's the 30 amp connector with the normal 15 amp connector once you've got this plugged in your ups function drops down to 1800 watts because that's the rated input of this if you exceed pulling 1800 watts from the outlets while charging this with this cable then it will shut off the UPS function. If you're concerned about EMP protection for this, this unit will fit inside of the TechProtect Double XL Faraday bag. You can find that at techprotectbag.com. You simply roll this inside the bag, zip it shut, and now you have a completely EMP proofed F3000. So that way after an EMP attack or a lightning strike or whatever that threat could be, you can pull this out and have the power that you want. One thing you need to pay attention to with the wall charging is that they now use this proprietary spring-loaded blue connector. On the F3800 and F3800 Plus, it was just a normal C13 plug, which is a very common connector. But you'll need to note that when you plug this in, you have to make sure that it has clicked in all of the way. One time I plugged it in and was not getting a charge and I realized I didn't push it in all the way and this didn't make an audible clicking noise. 
once I did that, it started charging. You also can solar charge and wall charge at the same time. So if you're in a real bind and your solar is only trickle charging a little bit, you can still have that trickle charging going on, say on like a cloudy day, but then still connect a gas generator and get this recharged very quickly. The app itself is very simple to use. I can see exactly what's coming in for both solar input as well as wall charging or gas generator. I can also see what's happening on the output side with the USB-C and USB-A connectors. Here I can turn on the car charging output, which is gonna be right here. And I can also turn on the AC output right here. You'll see that click on. And I can also control the brightness of the LED bar that's on the front. This comes in very handy when the power has gone out and you just need a little bit of light. If I wanna turn off the screen display, I can control that right here. I personally like to have mine on all the time. Going into the settings, we can set the battery charging speed here, and it'll actually describe to you how to use the 30 amp port, an EV port, and you can also select how fast you want it to charge from a 15 amp port. Here you have some smart modes for energy saving. I like to run my device timeout as never, screen brightness as high, and screen timeout 30 minutes is the max. I wish there was a never option so it would always stay on, but 30 minutes is all it gives me. One feature that I do like is it shows the estimated run time left, which also shows up here on the screen. So these happen to match, which is always great. And then as well, if I'm charging, it'll show me the estimated charge time until it's back to full. Warranty and customer service is always a big deal when it comes to solar generators, because if you have a problem, you need someone who's competent who can help you, but also knowing that if something breaks, that it's going to be replaced. It comes with a five-year warranty, and every time I call their customer service, I do get a hold of someone who speaks English clearly and is very familiar with the units. And one other thing I forgot to mention is the efficiency of the inverter. I put a 0.2C discharge on this. All that means is I took 20% of the rated battery capacity and that equals about 600 watts. So I put about a 600 watt load on this and I let it discharge all the way down to zero. When I did that, I got 90% efficiency out of the inverter. I know some other people have gotten as low as 84%. I'm not sure how they did their testing, if it was a different C rate. C rate just refers to how fast it's charging or discharging compared to the battery size. It's pretty uncommon to have units that are 90% or even higher. 94% is the highest that I've ever gotten on any unit. So the fact that this is at 90% efficiency when most are between like 80 and 85% efficiency is a huge thumbs up. That means you'll get more power from the battery when running your appliances. So for something that I can take with me portably and run my RV off of, use high voltage solar input, but still have the option to add lots of battery capacity. That's definitely a major attraction for the Anchor Solux F3000. The biggest gripe that I probably have is that you have to use F3000 specific expansion batteries. You cannot use expansion batteries that work with the F3800 plus or the F3800. The issue that I had early on with the higher idle power consumption rate was easily fixed by just doing a firmware update. Because even units like the Apollo or like what was the 0.0 Titan and the Titan 240 SP, those did not have the ability to do an update. The Apollos can do an update, it's just not as easy. This is very streamlined with the app. You push a simple button in a couple of minutes, it's ready to go. The only other major gripe that I have is the solar input. I wish they would have just made the second solar input the same 1600 watts, both at the 165 volt input. That would have actually just knocked it out of the park because then when you have all of the expansion batteries, you'd be able to recharge the entire bank even faster. So I wish they had done that, just like what they had done on the F3800 Plus. That would have been super impressive. But for all intents and purposes, this is a Goldilocks system in my opinion. Not too small, not too big, and it's expandable to the size that you need. It's fully possible to get 24 hours of runtime off of this, just running the essentials like a fridge, freezer, lights, fans, Wi-Fi, and those types of things without even adding expansion batteries. So every expansion battery you add, you could theoretically get another full 24 hours of runtime, if not even longer, depending on what you're running. So I truly think the F3000 is a solid unit and they've worked out the bugs now. The solar is good enough, the AC output is great, the 3600 watt input is incredible, and the fact that it's fully expandable to match your needs is exactly what I love to see in a system.